Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we have this lovely BSA Tour de France. We're going to be doing wheel bearings, headset bearings, chain, tyres, bottom bracket bearings, cabling, handlebar tape, pretty much a full strip down and rebuild of this bike and clean it up as best we can to get it running again. So every country out there has their manufacturers that are well renowned. BSA is a, a British manufacturer. They produce military equipment, they produce motorbikes, and they produce bikes for a period of time. And this is one of their bikes. So this is a classic British bike, the BSA Tour de France. So we're gonna strip it all down. We're gonna clean everything up. We're gonna re-lubricate everything, talk you through our sort of thought processes along the way, and show how we can really bring this bike up from very tired, not working correctly, parts that are poor, to really freshening this bike up so that it can become a Sunday best bike for enjoying you know, these weekend rides on, on something a little bit more exclusive and unusual as they get older, less of these get you know, uh, uh, on the road. So we're stripping everything down. Now I am a great fan of restorations that don't involve painting bikes. It's very easy to strip a bike down, clean off all the old paint, repaint it, re-sticker it and you know call it a restoration and I, I I actually love patinaed bikes I love to see a bike that is original paint original parts but everything working satisfactorily and, and pleasantly so this was the sort of thing we had with this bike you can see the way those bearings just fell out of that cup there was no grease left in there so it was running very very dry and and that needed re-lubricating but there was nothing wrong with the parts now this cup this side didn't come out we've showed this on other videos where sometimes they don't come out and we either leave them in and work from the other side but as you can see on this one it was actually also painted frame color and that was original manufacturing that would have been put in before the bike was painted so we elected to leave that cup in that side because it would have been far too difficult really to have removed we also had an issue with the rear wheel which we'll talk you through which again is sometimes you have to be sympathetic to the bike and sometimes leave things that otherwise you might have been quite pleased to do but because of the nature of the age and, and the corrosion, etc., you, you leave some parts in situ. So as you can see, we're now taking off everything here. All these old classic bikes had that fitting on for a light. It was, it was welded onto the frame, a, a light fitting, and long before the days of our various different types of lights and things, everyone used to have an old battery light that clipped onto there. So we, we kept that component on there and put that back on after we cleaned it all up and freshened it up. So we're now stripping everything off. Everything's going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner that, that can go in. We often get asked about our ultrasonic cleaner. We've got a six liter ultrasonic cleaner. We use a water soluble degreaser in there. So it's not watered down, it's water soluble. So everything now goes in the ultrasonic cleaner. All ready to be cleaned up as you see here. It's all popping into the cleaner now. This week's video is sponsored by Sports Barista. They're a coffee company that produce coffee specifically designed to sports. It's an unusual coffee and then it comes in a bag, much like a tea bag. Each of these bags has 10 grams of coffee in it. It's a slow release caffeine that lasts for up to six hours. You soak it in the water for three minutes or so to brew a fantastic tasting coffee. It's great for long distance cycling, any sporting events and even work. When we filmed these, this gave me <laughs> enough energy for the day. So thanks to Sports Barista for sponsoring us. There's a link in the description below to find out all about Sports Barista. Cracking coffee, ideal for your cycling. And then once out, we wash everything down in warm soapy water because like I say, it's a water soluble degrease that we use. So this washing off process will water down and wash off that degreaser so that then we can regrease everything, re-lubricate it before it all goes back on the bike. So that's what we're just doing here. You can see we just use a, a nylon brush, warm soapy water, microfiber towels in there. There's all sorts of little tools and things we leave in our cleaner. You know, we've got the wire brushes, the aluminium brushes, the, just all, all sorts of different things in there. Nylon brushes to clean everything off. So we pick out the tool that we need as we go. Once everything's out and clean, then we start the re-lubricating process. We've got a lubrication video in our on our channel which you know explains the various greases and lubricants we use but we, we've sort of got a tried and tested process for re-lubrication of various greases various thicknesses of oils and greases and it just as a case of working sympathetically through the components that you're currently working on to get them as like say as near to original as they would have left the factory in fact if not better in many cases because there's a lot of parts that 
for quickness aren't lubricated from the factory that we do do and it just makes a bike run so much smoother. One thing I always love cleaning up is these old chain sets. The, you know, the chroming on them is fantastic. This is sort of part aluminium, part chrome metal and they always absolutely glisten. I do love doing a good old chain set. You cannot beat them. And as you'll see when we put the bearings in it, they always spin so nice. I don't know, don't know where the world of chain sets and bottom brackets has gone, but it isn't where it used to be when these sort of bikes were commonplace. So as you can see now, we're using a thin oil on any pivoting points. We're using, on now I even use the silicon grease on the slider of the spring just to give that a nice little smoothness to, to the actuation of the brake. And we use copper grease on threaded parts to go on the bike. We often get a little bit of criticism about using copper grease on certain parts on bikes. But what you have to remember is copper grease is predominantly an anti-seize and an anti-corrosion grease. It's got far more properties of those than the copper. The copper in it is a minuscule mix within the grease. It's all about its anti-seize and anti-corrosion. It's a great grease on any threaded part and that's predominantly where we use it. As you can see me using it here. It's a, it's a great grease for, it sticks to the, it like washes over the threads, it sticks to the threads which means they're always got that anti-seize and anti-corrosion property to it. For the longevity of a part and the servicing it needs, it's amazing what a difference that makes. So next up we're going to address the headset. You'll hear it here momentarily how noisy that headset is when we first started looking at it. So you can see how gravelly and gritty and dry that sounds. So, you know, and you would never be able to ride this bike freely. You'd always have to be holding onto the handlebars. It would steer itself. And you can see here we had to use a lot of WD-40 to free this part. We actually had quite a job off camera to actually remove all this headset and get it apart. It was very, very seized on. But once we did take it apart, it was worthwhile because as you can see here, some point in the past, someone has actually put a ball race in there and the metal of the ball race was holding the bearings off of their own cup effectively and so they the graveling sound we could hear was basically one side was rolling within the cup and the other side was sitting on the cup so there was no rolling process so they were they were just completely wrong for the bike so we cleaned everything up here again we're using a wire brush there on the threads just to make sure because like I say we had a job getting this apart so a little bit of degreaser on the cups themselves get all that grime off Again, microfiber towels are your absolute friend when it comes to bike restorations. They really absorb and clean off all the dirt and debris and your cleaners and your polishes and everything you put, even excess grease and oil. A microfiber towel is absolutely your friend when it comes to this kind of work. So if you ever are considering doing a bike like this, go out and buy yourself a pack of microfiber towels first. That will help you and aid you in your process along the way. So now you can see rather than having a race with the bearing sitting in the race, I've actually put individual balls on that cup, both top and bottom. We're using the Shimano grease there. I love that grease because it holds the bearings against the force of gravity and yet it's quite viscous once everything's together. It's a, it is a lovely grease. You'll see it actually on the bottom bracket shortly on the chain set how smooth that grease is. So we've got everything back there now and as you can see there it's absolutely flowing beautifully. It's exactly as it should be. Back to original. Get rid of those ball race things. Now we did have a trouble here with the rear wheel. Normally we would show us taking off the, the block or free hub whichever the wheel has got. But in this instance we, we had actually un started to undo that and the threads were very damaged and we didn't want to disturb that anymore. So we did the wheel bearings separately to the block on that rear wheel. But we thought we'd show you this front one. We, we always tend to do one side of a bike on video or one process. So normally we would concentrate on the back wheel and then not show you the front. In this case, we're gonna show you the front and not the back. So you can see there how thick that grease had gone, the same on the back wheel. So we clean all that out and then we put these bits through the ultrasonic cleaner as well, just to really get that deep clean on those parts. Clean out those cups clean the hub you can see what a difference that makes I mean look at it, it just really you know these old bikes they absolutely pop out at you so yeah we've now just cleaned all the threads on these as well because it just helps put it all back together if your threads are nice and clean you aren't fighting a, a gravelly dirty thread and then again we're using our Shimano grease on the bearing races there and so we get the bearings each side and you see how that holds the bearings that grease it's a nice thick grease it just holds that bearing and, and then you can just put the covers on and rebuild the wheel and, and again a bit of copper slip on the threads 
but I say I tend to use that mainly on the threads and it doesn't matter if it's on aluminium stainless steel it, it, it doesn't alter the galvanic scale because of the anti-corrosions and anti-seizure pastes that are within that copper grease. So now we just cleaned up the wheel. Again, I noticed a comment last week, someone saying that after we'd wire walled and cleaned the wheel, it would only go rusty really quickly. That's not technically true because all you're doing is cleaning off the bleeding of the rust that's already there. You're not actually making it any, any more prone to rust than the damage that's already on the bike when, when it's brought to us. So we clean off that rust. These bikes, once they're done like this, the sort of people who spend the money on this kind of work, they're not going to be using this bike in the rain. It's going to become a bit, you know, a Sunday best bike for special occasions. So the rust isn't really an issue. It's a bit like an old car. Once it's under sealed and everything else, you would use it, but you wouldn't use it in the rain, in the heavy weather. And if you did, you would probably move to getting it dried out quite sufficiently to for rust not to take hold again. So again, once we've done these bikes, we do find that generally they're kept in the condition with which they've been cleaned up by us and, and, and restored. And ultimately, if you wanted a, a completely rust-free bike, you would fully restore it and you wouldn't be doing this kind of retro restoration rather than, you know, without paint and all the rest of it. You'd be looking for new parts. So we're cleaning up. There was a, a quite a few sort of thicker grease areas around the bottom bracket, around the dropouts here, around the brakes, even around that, that headset bearings where I think over the years, someone had just sprayed these areas with a thick old grease. And actually, although it wouldn't have done anything mechanically to help the bike, it did actually help the paint in those areas. Because as you know, with wax oil in a car, it's the oily grease that will stop it corroding. So it did kind of help our cause a little bit there where those thick black areas were. So now we're gonna just clean up this polish. We use teacup, paint restoration polish. It gets out the grime of the road grime and it will take marks off a frame. It takes years off frames really and it, it gets them back to a shine, a level of shine that hasn't disturbed the paint. You can see those those logos, the Tour de France and the BSA were, were very faded and thin anyway so we didn't want to disturb those so we never tea cutted those areas, we just tea cutted around them. And then we use a resin polish which will bring up that shine that we got with the tea cut protect the paint in the future will water will sit on that resin polish so it sort of protects the paint in the future gives that lovely shine and it's just like the finishing touch to a, a polish of a bike like this you can see how that's now looking beautifully blue again and then we start on this bottom bracket now this is a great example of how this shimano premium grease really holds a bearing we did this cup a little bit of copper slip on the threads and then because we had to leave the old cup in the bike, look at the way these balls are sticking on there against gravity. That's the beauty of that grease. It really is a great grease for rebuilding bearing sets. So, you know, be it headsets, wheels, or bottom brackets like this. I can thoroughly recommend that grease. We're not sponsored by Shimano yet, <laughs> but um, you know, it's uh, that's the grease of choice for us for bearing work. So now we're just getting that, and look at, look at that, look. I mean, how can you fault that? A beautiful spin. No play in that bottom bracket at all. New bearings, lovely and clean. The sparkle on that is lovely. You cannot fault that bottom bracket area and chain set. Other than these pedals, they wouldn't have been my choice of pedals on the bike like this. But that is the thing with working on customers' bikes, not our own. You know, we've all got our own tastes. We've all got our own preferences. And that's what this bike is all about. You have to always remember with all the bikes we use on all the videos, these are all customers' bikes that we've had come in to be, you know, this was a recommissioning work. We do this sort of work quite regularly and all the bikes, all the servicing you see are all somebody else's bikes, not our own, not yours, not the way you do something, not the way I do something. Their personal preference and choice to the owner of the bike. So when you're commenting, never criticize because you don't know the stories behind why someone uses these pedals on, on this old bike or anything else, you know, so it's important to remember that when you're watching these videos, they're just for entertainment. They're not always the way we, any of us would do something. It's all down to the customer's choice and preferences. So you can see here, we've got new brake blocks on these brakes. We've got new tires, new inner tubes, new cables. All these cables are nipped off. We use a little guide to get all the cable lengths the same so that our front and rear brake and rear derailleur always got the same length cable tails on them. So we use a little guide thing before we cut them off. You can see the little clips on the frame there, new outers, new inners, new brake pads, new rear fire. These are stainless steel cables that we use on here. Nice new cables that we know will last well. 
new chain. You can see there we use what we call silver, silver chain. It's got a, a nice sh glossy shine to that chain. It just makes a bike like this. You know, if you just put a black chain on there, it it would, you know, this chain sparkles with the bike. It gives the, the bike the credit that it, that it deserves with a nice chain on there as well. And these chains are actually quite good, reasonable value for money. So it, they're just, you know, a chain we get from one of our suppliers that just looks, finishes off this kind of work. And you can see here, the chain was riding up on that block in the gear one. That's what they call the lower screw adjustment, which is what we're just adjusting there. That would have been like that because there was no adjustment made to those, those screws. And the way that derailleur sat was exactly where it would have been when it came in. So that bike did need the service just to get that derailleur adjusted correctly. And then we're just using a new bar tape here. We're, this, this tape was, I think, slightly a slightly different shade to the original, but it matched the bike so lovely. Yeah, the bar tape on this really was almost made for the bike. It was a lovely bar, bar tape there. So you can see what a difference we've made to this. Would you ride the Tour de France on this bike? You probably would ride that route on this and thoroughly enjoy it. We were so pleased with the way this came up. So as you can see, this is the kind of work we do weekly. Please like, subscribe and follow us. Hit the notification bell. Leave a comment down below. The comments help us boost us in the search algorithms for YouTube. This is our restoration for this week. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. And if you're a previous subscriber, thanks for subscribing to us. You know, we really appreciate what's happened with the channel and how positive it's been received. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week.